and many of us can imagine of someone with a halo around their head wearing a robe chanting mantras doing yoga occupying a different mental space altogether but is it really that complicated perhaps not here to demystify the concept of spirituality we are here to talk about spirituality for everyone hello and welcome i'm afreen kadwa i have a very interesting panel with me someone you perhaps wouldn't imagine talking about spiritualism <laughs> but here's adman pralhat kakkar who says he's a believing non believer and uh, there's actor nandita das she calls herself a seeker we're going to ask her to define that but in a while and uh, we have that sadguru <laughs> jagiva so they world renowned spirit spiritual leader and the founder of Isha Foundation so let's begin with asking pralhad what is spirituality to you pralhad i have only had two or three spiritual experiences in my entire life and i went through my entire life not even looking consciously but when it did come across me it hit me like a broadside i mean it was uh, it taught it taught you lots of things it teaches you humility to start off with you know and it teaches you how really um, insignificant you might be in the scope of things in in the larger scope the first time i had a spiritual um, experience was when i was diving off a reef in uh, lakshadweep actually the first time was the ocean itself the ocean and its enormous moods and its power and its essence of fear you know that you you're scared of the ocean because of its incredible unknowing power and it's it's also the unknown it's it's the last frontier in terms of what you don't really know about and when you explore it and you and the more you learn about it the more you realize you don't know about it and that in itself to me was a spiritual experience right nandita what's your take on spirituality have you had a spiritual experience like prahlad mentioned yeah i mean like he said about the ocean i think going to ladakh and seeing those mountains and being humbled again realizing that we really are a speck and that we give so much importance to ourselves and everything around us and take things so seriously So I mean there have been moments of I don't know if they're spiritual experiences because you know a lot of things that you think could be spirituality but isn't so it's a process of almost elimination is it morality no is it religion no I don't think it's complicated but it definitely is not something for me at least that is easily definable Hmm. Sadhguru, do you want to define it for us? Should we even attempt to define it then, or is there a need to define it? <laughs> Definitely, there is a need to define it, because otherwise, every overwhelming experience will get labeled as uh, spirituality. Whenever any human being experiences something bigger than himself, the traditional way of looking at it is, oh, this is God, because it's something bigger than you. The whole idea of God is just that. that something bigger than you anything bigger than you it could be a human being it could be an experience it could be a natural thing it doesn't matter what but is this spiritual no this is just life and life is not a small thing when i say just life i am not trying to dismiss it as a small thing it is the greatest thing only because life when life becomes an overwhelming powerful blissful experience for you you want to know what could have created this If you want to know the process or the source of creation which is the most intimate part of creation to you your own body isn't it there is a captive creator here he's trapped within you you shouldn't miss him here <laughs> if you don't miss him here if you know the source of creation within you you are spiritual if you look for the source of creation outside you are a scientist you will look forever this is something the topmost level of scientific community has realized that they will be looking forever that's their attitude they will explore the existence they will never know the source of creation that's very clear to the scientific community now right but uh, pralhad if i could ask you do you think what the sadguru is saying is relevant in the times that we are living in with 14 hour work days 20 hour work days do you <laughs> think that we realize the importance of it is it still relevant today see i think today a lot more people uh traveling within themselves to seek what they are looking for like uh, my journey started with the ocean but eventually diving into the ocean was like diving into myself it was confronting all my fears all my um essential baggage that i was carrying in my head i had to deal with all that yes you agree nandita 
Yes, I mean, yeah. I think it's more relevant than ever. Mm. Because there is also a lot of emptiness with this 20 hour of work and knowing it all, having so much variety, whether in terms of media or entertainment or work or money or definition of success or whatever it may be. In fact, in India, it's still seen much more skeptically yeah. um, as it's seen like in the West and all people are wanting to find because there's greater emptiness. They've done it all. They've come the full circle and now they are looking for something that's deeper, that's more inward looking, that is beyond all of this because they haven't found the answers in this you almost think you've cracked the code and you realize at the end of it you haven't mm. and I think we are not learning from them and we are still in that circle we still think maybe we'll find some form of entertainment or happiness or success or whatever you know these words are this fulfillment through these material things and because and and that's why we are skeptical we think oh this spirituality is an esoteric word it's for gurus and followers and there is there is a lot of mysticism mm -hmm. around no, it no i would like to address that question in a different way yes like i'm sorry i'm not butting in because i that question wouldn't be relevant if i had covered this right. see there is in science there is science and technology everybody thinks they are actually interested in science but it's not true most of the world is only interested in the offshoot of technology because it provides things for you. Right. Similarly, when it comes to inner nature, if you do not understand the essential science, then I can teach you how to be peaceful. But that's it. In a certain, ex you know, day to day how to be peaceful, I can teach you. But if somebody says, I am a seeker, I believe them <laughs> that they are seekers. Now about going to the ocean and experiencing an overwhelming experience, going to the mountain, it's beautiful. You must see, enjoy the world the way it is. But you need to understand the fish in the ocean doesn't think it's a spiritual experience, nor the mountain goats think a mountain is a spiritual experience because they are there all the time. If you bring them to the city, they may think it's a spiritual experience. But it's not the mountain that makes you spiritual. See, it it's is just being breaking of the barrier. It's what you feel about yourself in relation to no, the world. No, it is around. the breaking of the barrier within you. Something broke right. within you. You were in a shell. This broke and became a bigger shell. What I am saying is, if you get used to that bigger shell, mm. it feels the same way as the previous one. So, if you want to become boundless and you attempt it through the physicality, what you're doing is you're trying to go towards boundlessness in installments. Can you count one, two, three, four, five and one day say infinite? You'll only become endless counting. So people used to work for eight hours, now you're saying fourteen hours, somebody says eighteen hours, because you're becoming endless counting. That's not the way. Physic through physical means, you can never reach towards a boundless nature because every human being is looking for that. You give him whatever you want, three days he's okay, fourth day he's looking for something. Somebody may label it as greed. I just say this is life process mm. in the wrong direction, that's right. all. Yes. If you want to know a boundless nature, you must experience, you must perceive something which is beyond the physical, which they might have touched when they jumped into the ocean, when they saw the mountain, when they sang a song, when they danced, when they closed their eyes. In so many ways it could have yeah. happened to an individual. They touched it, but now the question is, question is of sustainability. <laughs> so how do you sustain it? There's lots more questions but I'll have to take a break at this point but coming up next the changing of star of spirituality is it just a fad? Is it here to stay? Lots more questions to the Sadhguru. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Spirituality for everyone, that's the topic of discussion today. We have Sadhguru answering some very basic questions. And before the break, you mentioned how one can attain that boundless state. I want to come back to you in very simplistic terms. What does it mean? What is spirituality? Is it yoga? Is it meditation? Quantify it for us if it's possible. Spirituality does not mean any particular practice. It's a certain way of being. To get there, there are many things to do. If you have a certain type of body, that body will not support that. This is like growing a garden in your house. If uh, the stem of the plant is in a certain way, it won't yield flowers, you have to do something. If the soil is in a certain way, it won't yield flowers. If the sunlight is in a certain way, it won't give. So you have to take care of those things. So if you cultivate your body, your mind, your emotions and your energies to a certain level of maturity, something else blossoms within you, that is spirituality. When your rationale is immature, it doubts everything. When your rationale matures, 
it sees everything in a completely different light. But if I may say so, that even to be confused, I don't think is a bad thing all the time. Not to be at confused all. about the right thing See, is more important no. than to be too sure confusion, about something. Confusion, confusion is a boon. If you have made your conclusion, that's death. Conclusion yeah. is an end. Confusion means you're looking. Yeah. So the basis of the confusion is that you have realized you don't know. Recently I met somebody who, who, uh, who believes that he's a very strong atheist. He came to me and said, uh, I believe there is no God. I said, I don't even believe that. <laughs> <laughs> but can an atheist be spiritual then? No. But you must understand, even a theist cannot be spiritual. <laughs> <laughs> That's confusing now. <laughs> because atheist and theist are not different people. One believes there is God, another believes there is no God. Both of them are believing something that they do not know. You're not sincere enough to admit that you do not know, that's your problem. So theists and atheists are not different. They are the same people just putting up an act of being different. A spiritual seeker is neither a theist nor an atheist. He has realized that he does not know, so he is seeking. But you think spirituality is only got to do with age and time? Do you think that even a child can't be spiritual? Who, who is spiritual? Who can't be spiritual? Can you… is there a parameter to that? Normally people… Some, if somebody dies, they think they have become spirits, yes? So I would say only the dead cannot be spiritual. <laughs> Every living… <laughs> everything that is alive can be spiritual. <laughs> True. <laughs> Including a child? Yes. Yeah, well, if it's alive… <laughs> in India, if you don't know this, in this culture, Always a child is treated like a god. Hmm. Yes? Yes. Traditionally, we treat a child like a god because he hasn't acquired the nonsense that others have. He is closer to creator than anybody else. <laughs> I think that's so. Here it's culturally so. I think everywhere in the world, one way or the other, people recognize that, isn't it? I think also asking the right questions is kind of important. We have such a need and this is not I just about… I wouldn't say asking right Any question is the right question. Only answers can be wrong. <laughs> well, I'm not so sure because sometimes… Questions you, cannot be wrong, is not it? Not wrong or right. Maybe right or wrong itself is a wrong word. Yeah. It's lack of a better word because that itself makes it moralistic or defines it. But the human need to constantly label things or to constantly say it is this or that, you know, can an atheist be spiritual? Mm. One, there is an assumption that there is a connection between religion and spirituality and therefore can someone who's not religious be spiritual. Hmm. So I'm not so sure if that question itself presupposes the connection between religion and spirituality which it may not have or no, even the thing to is say… What, I would like to clear this, this is true but at the same time, what you see as religion today is some time ago, a long time ago, they all started as spiritual processes, sure. got too organized and they became religions. So there is always a possibility, the spiritual moment that you start today, after hundred, two hundred, five hundred years may become a religious moment because spirituality has to be kept up with subjective aliveness in it. If that subjectivity dies, it just becomes a belief system. So are they connected? Yes, religion is spirituality gone bad. <laughs> no, I, I mean, personally, I believe that uh, um, religion is actually committed more crimes against humanity in the name of God than a any other activity that human beings have actually done. Look at the history of humans. We use organized religions constantly as a method of exploitation, more than a leading uh, to a better life. And it creates rift, it creates it's uh, divisive schisms, by it's divisive its nature, by nature, yeah. it becomes political and it's used by people and misused by people over and over again because there are a whole lot of people out there who actually believe in it so blindly and so completely for lack of anything better. But I don't know if they even believe in it no, because like he said that spirituality also, I mean religion can also have spirituality, it's the connotation that no, it has taken. No. They don't the believe years. in it in blindly. The moment you believe something, you become blind. <laughs> That's quite the a moment you believe right? something, you become blind to everything else. See, the whole f uh, conflict on the planet is not between good and evil as they're trying to project it. It's always one man's belief versus another man's belief, yeah. isn't it? Because the moment you believe something, you become blind to everything else. So the need for belief is more psychological than spiritual. You want to cling to something, you want to feel secure, you want to feel like you know it all. 
that's coming from a very immature mind. What, what is the problem? You don't know anything about this existence. Actually, you don't know. What is the problem? It's beautiful <laughs> and you see how to make yourself beautiful within yourself, how to make yourself joyful. All this is within your hands. So you're placed in an existence where you don't know where is the beginning, where is the end. In spite of all the scientific exploration, you still don't know where it begins, where it ends. But so, where it begins, where it ends, we're going to have that discussion after a very short break. It's time uh, actually now for a short break. But that discussion coming up next, it's about spirituality for everyone. So how do you incorporate little things in your everyday life to change it for the better? That's coming up next. Stay tuned. Welcome back. We're talking about spirituality for everyone, but is it really possible to find the spiritual in our everyday lives? Let's uh, begin by asking you, Nanta, one question. You earlier mentioned that uh, filmmaking for you, what you do in your everyday life, actually gave you that inner peace. Do you want to tell our viewers about that? I wouldn't put the question like that, but I don't know if it gave me enough, uh, enough peace. I was hmm. very stressed also when I was shooting. Hmm. I just finished my directorial debut film. Uh, what it did was that, you know, philosophically we talk about things, we talk about spirituality, you kind of have your own little theories about life, but sometimes you just suddenly get that playing field to actually practice those theories. In, like when you're with 100 people in a unit, you're directing your first film, you still don't know so many things, you're dealing with different egos, sometimes even politics that's happening on the set, and I would let go and I would, I would be less hard on myself and that itself is tough because as a person I'm quite hard on myself and hard on everyone else and all of that. So to let go and say there were reasons that peace is more important, that the film is not the end all be all of anything, you know that life is greater than a film. To, I think to be able to genuinely think that during the shoot for me was like a little step towards, a baby step towards uh, where I want to go. Yeah, Pralada, <laughs> have you made that baby step? No, no, not at all. I'm, I'm, He's made I'm, giant leaps. I'm, I'm an enfant terrible on my set. I scream, I shout, I'm extremely difficult, I'm uncompromising and uh, I give everybody a very hard time. You think someone myself. like that is spiritual? You think throwing tantrums and getting angry, <laughs> screaming at others, that's a, that's a bad sign. That's a very bad sign. So I have to, the whole journey into spiritualism is to try and become what Nandita has become and say, Not at all. the hell with it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think compromise is the right thing or the good thing at all, but it's, it's just that, you know, what you give importance at what time. Hmm. It's not a compromise. Life is a compromise. I mean, hmm. there are many things that, you know, you can what, look at it. What I had about, heard about uh, Prahalad is, uh, after his spiritual practices started, some things, some simple things started in his life. <laughs> when he screamed before, the whole neighborhood heard. Now only the unit hears. <laughs> it means uh, it's a more controlled, calculated screaming. Screaming is needed to the screaming, but Let not to the, the extent it's hear. needed, <laughs> to the extent it's needed, nothing more, nothing less. But I have a very basic question, Sadhguru. Do I need to go to an ashram? Do I need to go to a five-day workshop to know what spirituality is? Can I do something in my everyday life? to help myself. See, uh, even to learn the ABC of the language, you went to your school for years, isn't it? Right. So you want to learn something which is very subtle, something that could transform your life completely. Why do you think five days is too much <laughs> or three days is too much? Somewhere in your mind, still your mind is so deeply conditioned to believe that your life will get better only by fixing the outside. It is this misconception which is giving you, which is making you give so much attention to the outside, not paying attention to the inside. So if you want to change the way you live or experience life, if you want to experience life blissfully or exuberantly, what should you pay attention to? This one or outside? If your work is important, the, re the, the excuse that all of them <laughs> will give is, my work is so important that I can't pay attention to myself. There are other kinds of people, holy people, who think, they think it's selfish to pay attention to themselves. Now, if your work is important, the first and foremost thing that you should do is, you need to be worked at. Absolutely. <laughs> See, how, how good an actor you are, how good a director you are, how good anything you are, essentially depends on how good you are, isn't it? Absolutely. Right. You're acting, you're directing or whatever else you're doing is a sec it's an outcome, it's a consequence. You're trying to attend to the consequence, not to the source. You're trying to attend to the flowers, not to the roots. You attend to the roots, flowers will happen for you. 
Sadhguru, one very simple question. What can we do in our everyday lives to get that spiritual experience? One thing is, we can put you onto something very simple, which is subjective. Any subjective technology cannot be taught to you in uncommitted atmospheres. So if you are willing to give yourself a small space of time which is very committed and focused, we can put you on a simple practice where every day investing just twenty-one minutes a day, your day starts with a very phenomenal spiritual experience within you, very powerful experience which lasts during the day and which leaves you peaceful and joyful through the day. Apart from that, to sustain it, one simple thing that every human being has to do is your sense of involvement is indiscriminate. If you look at this person also, you're equally involved. If you look at the tree also, you're equally involved. If you look at the cloud also, you're equally involved. You're equally involved with your own body and the breath and everything. If you have no discrimination as to which is better than which, and you're equally involved with every aspect of life, then you will be constantly spiritual. Nobody needs to teach you anything about spirituality. Naturally, a human being is longing to become boundless. He is bound because he is drawing boundaries as to this is good, this is bad, and fixing himself. So to be non-judgmental or to no, be no. in the see, moment? No, no. Those are all morals we are trying to do draw out of it. So see, then what do you mean when you say that see, we don't draw boundaries? If I'm involved with you, right now I'm... When I'm talking to you, I'm totally involved with you. Focused on... When I'm involved with you, do I judge you, not judge you, that's all left to me. Why should I give up my discretion? Why should I give up my ability to discriminate? I do, but my involvement is never lower. Whether it's you or a tree or a dog or a cat or just the air that I breathe, I'm equally involved, consciously involved. Once you're involved indiscriminately, then there is no entanglement with life. People are always been talking about detachment, simply because they're afraid of entanglement. If you try to detach yourself, you not only avoid entanglement, you also avoid involvement. Where there's no involvement, there's no life. Yes. I'm afraid we'll have to wrap it up here. Thank you so much for coming to our studios today. And I hope that for our viewers, at the end of this half hour, we've succeeded in slightly making it less complicated, the whole concept of spirituality for everyone. Thank you for watching and stay tuned. Lots more coming up on Times Now.